in a world where nostalgia rages across the land, where everyone and their mother has a podcast, where there's still a movie trailer guy who says, in a world. Three friends revisit films, shows, and games that molded them as they search for answers to life, the universe, and everything in between. Settle in and join us for Screen Refresh. Welcome back to Screen Refresh, a show where we revisit the films, shows, and games from our childhood, try to take another look at what we fell in love with. As always, I'm Tim, and I'm joined by the rest of the Screen Refresh crew, Nick and Dean. Hello there. I'm in. <laughs> I was thinking briefly at the beginning of this of like, oh, should we all have like handles when we do it in? And I was like, that's not the thing to think about midway through my second sentence of this intro <laughs> to try to all of a sudden be like, okay, and how do we stick this landing as soon as I get to my name? So just trying to think of like a over 40 kind of nickname for myself, <laughs> like brittle knees or something. <laughs> this is my co-host Skidmark and Steely Dan. <laughs> hey, Skidmark Steve, <laughs> still hanging out playing Nintendo. Cock. <laughs> is that from something? Basketball, yes. your favorite movie. Oh, I should have sent you. A, I found, I'll offline. There was a basketball meme today that I saw that somebody just took the audio of from that and put it over a real baseball game <laughs> he's pointing up to the heavens probably looking for some relative to apologize to for the performance he's giving out here today <laughs> so we're not doing basketball uh for any of those unaware we are doing the 1995 cult hit about a film 10 minutes in the future called hackers so there is going to be a lot of images on a computer screen projected onto people's faces. Um, there's going to be a lot of that one scene in Jurassic Park where they're like, Linux, I know this, or whatever, or Unix, and they're Unix. like the visual representation of going through buildings. It's a lot of that throughout this entire film. I did like the projection on their faces. I thought that was a really clever way of showing like there's shit on the screen and we're not going to oh, bother yeah. you with looking at it. Like, very unrealistic, but it's visually, like, it's nice rather than just, okay, it's just a camera pointed at three faces just kind of staring at the camera as they type. I have a, I have a note on that somewhere during her, like, house party, but the, all the nerds are just around the computer instead. Oh, yeah, the, how all of them are marveling at, like, a Windows Media Player visualization. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it moves with the... <laughs> you get the lyrics, too. I was going to say, it whips the llama's ass. No, that was Winamp. That was Winamp. So, yeah. So, there's going to be a lot of segments throughout this movie that uh, there's different references to, uh, I think it's the the conscience of a hacker. Um, it was another name for the Hacker's Manifesto by, uh, I forgot the guy's name, Lloyd something. But, so, they end up reading a lot of excerpts like the, this is our world now, the world of the electron and the switch. We exist without skin color, nationality, or religious bias. Yes, I am a criminal. My crime is that of curiosity. There's a lot of <laughs> that throughout this movie. Hack the planet? I don't know. Hack, the, Hack planet. the planet. I still love this film. <laughs> I don't know if either of you have seen this prior to this point. Um, high school, definitely. This is the first time. So we kind of come at it from three different angles, and I am really interested on how you two feel about this. I have a soft spot for all of that weird timeline of like, it's very 90s, but it's supposed to this be in the future. Very 90s. Is it supposed to be the But they really future? don't understand the future. What year is it supposed to be? I it's not 95? I thought it was like supposed to be mid 90s, but it's supposed to be oh. like, I think... It's one of those things where it's like 10 minutes in the future where everything looks normal, but there's like some <laughs> things that are just a little odd. Like, oh, now there's a hacking thing that all the kids watch every night and all this other stuff. I'm watching this. I'm trying to think of all the movies that any movies that came before this where like they show hacking. I'm like, how cool and known was computer hacking before this movie? Like, because it technically starts in the like, what, like, mid 80s yeah because yeah. it's when date is a kid 
So you figure, all right, that's the starting point, but I can't think of anyone that even had a computer that early on. I didn't think computers became mainstream for the home until at least like the late eighties, early nineties. Wait, I mean, but I don't, I don't remember. The, yeah. This is no citation for any of this stuff. This is our <laughs> own pure conjecture. Citation we don't, needed. We don't know any of this stuff. And like my first computer was, God, I don't remember. It, it, it was definitely probably me. yeah, Windows ninety five minimum. Because that's the operating system that was on it. My cousin had 3.1, but I never used it. Yeah, we started in, I think, 92 or 93. Because I remember being super young. And we ended up, it was DOS. And we had to do the whole, like, CD or space slash, change directory, all of this to access files. And then eventually it was, we got um, 3.1. And then I think at one point there was another visual interface quick menu that we had where it was essentially a desktop and you had to just set up your shortcuts to your program. So this way you had something to click to launch instead of having to do a actual line string command. Yeah, we had 3.1. It was 1994. It was a Packard Bell computer. And we just had AOL. And he records on it every month. (laughs) They don't make them like they used to. As we look at Dean in 8-bit. But I... I was just wondering, like, what... Because this movie, like, glamorizes the fuck out of hacking. Or at least it makes it look like... Yeah. You see what the movie shows you? And what hacking really is, is, like, it's just a guy in a computer room. And the big servers on the other end, it's just a guy with a computer and some hard drives. (laughs) It's like... Because, like, kids... (laughs) Kids, like, oh, I want to be, like, a video game designer. Like, in reality, it's you staring at a wall of text. And right. trying to figure out code. And that's exactly it. All of these like fancy graphic interfaces and visual styles, like that's entirely embellished for the sake of this being a movie. The right. real thing is just them typing away into like a notepad and running a it's command bat script onto yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or all of the the social engineering style hacking of them just pretending to be people to get security access or i mean that's hey i forgot this yeah like that's all the stuff that probably gets used more often in day-to-day that we see which it it made me laugh on how not to get into the movie immediately but like the very first big hacking scene where he's hacking into like the local tv station just so he can change the channel so to speak or change the programming and then Angelina Jolie character like hacks into his computer and like what are you doing in my territory and it's all these like fancy FMV videos that they're sending to each other like (laughs) I liked how all of her threats were using exclusively the font of you wouldn't download a car (laughs) (laughs) download now on 1001fonts.com I mean officially if that if I can download your car you get to keep your car and I get a car at the same time (laughs) Yes. yes. <laughs> a thousand percent. Who would be against this? Capitalists. Yeah. They will have to throttle my internet connection at Xfinity to prevent me from getting a fleet of vehicles. They just heard you say that and they are working on it right now. <laughs> That's their trigger words. <laughs> just make throttle. sure you download off of uh, NordVPN. Oh, wait, we're not sponsored. Never mind. <laughs> download any VPN Surf you want. Surfshark or any VPN. whatever. Express VPN. But so I guess we I I took us on a run around, but I yeah, I was just wondering what came before this as far as like this is glamorous oh, yeah. hacking and like how much computer hacking movies had come out. I remember like weird science. Other than that, I don't know. <laughs> before this before this was access main security. <laughs> access right. main program crew. That's true. Yeah, this um, was a I hacker. don't remember when the net came out with Sandra Bullock. Ooh, yeah. That was before That's, this. I watched that I recently. Think. It wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. It was one of those movies that I'd always seen the like trailer for for years. And then I decided, I'm going to watch that out of nowhere, out of the blue. And it was just not what I was expecting. It wasn't bad, it's, though. But... Oh, it was the same year as uh, this. Oh, that's that's 1995, the year of the future. July. This this was July, just a couple months before Hackers premiered. I'll never choose the net to be on this show unless one of you guys do. <laughs> no, uh, but if anybody is... It's safe. <laughs> yeah, if anybody is a huge fan of the net, uh, there's a podcast I used to listen to that sadly ended called Hey, Do You Remember? And they do an episode on the net and it is exactly accurate. 
from pizza.net to that they end up putting in this person's I, I forgot what it was i think it's like they they hack his medical record and put down that he has like some disease and he finds out and he's like oh no and then just kills himself <laughs> it's like oh you you wouldn't like check in on that you just like <laughs> if i all of a sudden said like you have a new my chart message and i just log into my chart and i check my results and i'm like oh no i'm not immediately opening my window and walking out or something so the net so yeah so as he said so this opened september 15th 1995 it released against angus and unstrung heroes directed by diane keaton starring uh i think michael richards and um andy mcdowell based on i think franz lists or something the writer that movie sounds like it went to the ether yeah yeah i personally i just too i haven't heard of that movie since the I at 90s. least heard of Angus. But you have heard yeah. of it. <laughs> well, they pl- I think that one had more commercials than the other one did. Drew, like Angus, I, I feel like never, I never saw. I just remember hearing about it on like, it was like MTV and whatnot. It was probably catered to us too, because it's like, hey, you're a kid. This movie's about a kid. You should watch it. <laughs> yeah, because isn't it like the kid's an outsider or something and dot, dot, never dot. Saw- I don't remember Other any things of happen. So... Also, September 1995, uh, a number of films of varying styles. We had The Prophecy with Christopher Walken um, about the angel who comes down and takes out people and Viggo Mortensen as the devil and all this stuff. Uh, There was the limited release of Empire Records, one of my favorite films that at some point we'll cover on this. Over my dead body. Denzel himself in Devil in a Blue Dress. We had the Texas Chainsaw, The Next Generation with Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey as the ongoing stars early in their careers doing bad horror. I didn't know they were even in that. Yep. Uh, Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Also hey, with hey, Paul hey. Rudd. Keep the, keep the horror stuff on your podcast. What else you got on that month? <laughs> seven? So seven, in? seven? Seven more movies or seven the movie? So seven seven the movie. So seven. So seven in. Oh. That's a box I would, that we should. Uh, I regret go not into. being alive to. Well, I, I was alive in 1995. I regret not being able to go to a movie by myself in 1995 to see this movie with <laughs> Dean because after having him ask one ticket for the Vivich at the theater, I guarantee you he would say one for seven in if we went to go seven in. <laughs> uh, but the the last film from September 1995 to Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. With uh, Patrick Swayze, John Leguizamo, and uh, Wesley Snipes. Great film. Watched it in the past couple years, and it was still terrific. Drag has been cool for a long time. I should watch that. I keep seeing the clips to it. I ain't never seen it. This is like the third time it's been brought up by us, too. So Really? Maybe we'll pick it at some point, Dean. Yeah. I've been wanting to see Birdcage lately, too. That Double feature? I remember some clips from that. I never saw the whole thing, though, but it was Of Birdcage? Yeah. 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 I just see that that Robert that Robert Robin Williams, <laughs> he's like instructing I think on stage and just like it's just like one take and he's just like being Robin Williams and it was very funny. The end. <laughs> uh, so guess you hated it. <laughs> <laughs> directed by Ian Softly, uh, he also did K Pax with Kevin Spacey Ew. about the guy who thinks he's an alien. Or I haven't seen that in two decades. Uh, the Skeleton Key, the kind of voodoo horror with uh, Kate Hudson. Inkheart with Brendan Fraser, based on the book. And uh, he wrote, I guess, also and directed Backbeat, the biopic about, I think it was Pete Best from the Beatles, uh, the original drummer, if I recall. So he's had a, a bit of a career as far as a before and after Hackers. Um, although I didn't see a lot for the writer Raphael Moreau who did The Rage Carry 2, and if you remember the spinoff of X-Files, The Lone Gunman, uh, he was the story editor for The Lone Gunman. What does the story editor do in relationship to the writer? I think he Besides reads the obvious it with the title, edits it. but really? Hmm. Maybe, I don't I never know. heard of a story editor. Like, I've heard of an editor, I've heard of a writer, but never a story editor, and it's just I'm curious on what they actually did. I wonder if it's because, like, he didn't do enough to get a story by credit, but he took the existing story and just, like, 
made tweaks, tweaks so they're like oh, yeah okay. i'm sure it's it's kind of yeah that's probably what it is so the interesting thing enough evidently is so rafael moreau ended up um i guess becoming super involved or super interested in the whole kind of hacker subculture so he ended up like going in with these groups of hackers during his writing it's process like the, book, the game wait what like the book the game like the book the game i think it's called the game Thanks, Dean. I just lost the game. <laughs> uh, it was a. It's never mind. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So I guess in like the the late eighties, early nineties, there was like this step up in terms of um, regulations and crackdowns and things like that over all of the the hacking world. Um, at the time, as things were getting more popular. So he decided he was going to write a script about all of this uh, because he wanted to be able to stay involved and tell this story. So he ended up meeting with other people who were kind of the people that the sh- movie was based around, um, different characters. So like Crash Override, Dave Murphy's character, uh, originally Zero Cool. He met Mark Abney, who uh, went by the name Fiber Optic, who very similar to Zero Cool, he ended up getting arrested and going to prison for hacking charges at kind of a young age. So he was involved in all of this stuff. So it's interesting to me that loving the hacking culture, being involved in the hacking culture, having people who are hackers consult on this film, (laughs) and it is very not accurate to hacking <laughs> probably because they looked at it and they're like do you want this accurate or do you want this cool <laughs> yeah because accurate is boring as hell <laughs> visually Which also i guess is kind of cool if like because a lot of these like hackers that they talk to and what are involved there are all these people that are like i think the consultant was 16 on this because he was like a hacker from like 14 or something so all of them are young, so they probably were just excited to have their hobby or what they love being turned into a movie. And it's, well, yeah, I don't want to do this. You know, it'd be really cool because, yeah, you're all like teenage kids at the time. So totally get it. As you said before, the whole projection thing onto the faces is more visually striking than probably it is in real life. Hacking to me as a kid was cracking video games so i didn't have to have a cd key to play the game (laughs) that was my favorite as a kid um was we we played a dinosaur hunting game called carnivores and what i found is that you can go into the user.ini file and see all these various things in there and then you can find different things that would talk about like player movement equals or all of this stuff and then just play around with the numbers and save it and then find that it increases your speed or your health or the damage of your guns in the game. So then I just started trying to find as many games as we could as a kid that we had where they also gave you access to the user.ini file to just make changes to that. And I thought that we were hacking um, <laughs> when in fact we were just, I guess, changing coding settings. Leet hacks or... Do you know that game's on Steam? Carnivores is on Steam. Yeah, it's fifteen bucks. Worth it. Time to take a nostalgia. I bought trip. it. Bought it recently, and uh, wasn't bad. Late September, I think. It's kind of nice to relive that because I played the hell out of that game. So I didn't know you can do that. Yeah, I wonder if you can do it off the Steam version. I I kind of want to revisit it just to see um, that and the the crossbow. So the the last thing I just wanted to get into before we kind of get into the introduction of the movie is. It has an impressive cast for the mid '90s. Johnny Lee Miller, that at some point will end up getting into Mind Hunters, one of my favorite movies. Johnny Lee Miller also from a number of other things uh, over the years, like Dracula 2000. I think his big break was Train Spotting for the most part. But we get a very young Angelina Jolie as a rival hacker. <laughs> Matthew Lillard just still dominating the '90s it's- as serial killer. Isn't this her first movie too? Angelina Jolie, possibly first early. Maybe. I was never an Angelina Jolie fan, so I don't know, but I definitely recall seeing her in this as the first time really seeing her. Yeah, because I don't recall anything of her prior, but also I wasn't really keeping up with her career back in the '90s, like when I was six. Um, 
but there are like a ton of people in here that you know from other things like Lorraine Brocco's in this uh definitely a a large career Penn Teller or Penn Gillette from Penn and Teller is one of the the security guys I was really surprised Mark Anthony was in this yeah. so fucking random <laughs> he was in a surprising number of movies in the 80s and early 2000s I um, had to google immediately when I saw him was that Mark Anthony yep yeah, which I, I love him throughout this movie of like, oh, they're at the party and then he just puts on glasses and sneaks in and just dancing with the kids. And it's like the hello fellow kids. <laughs> Wendell Pierce, um, Agent Dick Gill, you might know from The Wire oh, or yeah. uh, something with Bite, the Fair Itself episode. Every so often I was waiting for Agent Gill to be like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he had opportunity. Yeah. Uh, there a were lot. certain points where I'm like, I won't blame you, man. Go for it. <laughs> so I know we've we just got off another film with uh, this gentleman, Fisher Stevens as Mr. The Plague. <laughs> the weirdest character. I like <laughs> even taking like aside from the rest of his career of okay, short circuit, yeah. Um, aside from Super Mario Brothers. This is his weirdest character. Like the have no fear. I is here. The him skateboarding out of the mist, like <laughs> sketching on the side of a limo <laughs> so he can grab the floppy disk and then take off. Yoink. Um, so, yeah, it's there's a lot of weird stuff with him in this, but it's still interesting. He is not a threatening force. Um, but. Two of the other hackers that are the main characters, uh, Rinaldi Santiago, who plays um, Freak or Phantom Freak, uh, you might know him as Sally Can't Dance from Con Air. And Lawrence Mason, who plays Lord Nikon, one of the other friendly hackers, is Tintin from The Crow. Yeah, I looked him up. He's barely recognizable now. He's just, he's definitely aged. He looks great, but I couldn't picture him being like, oh shit, this is Tintin, you know? Yeah. Because Tintin and nikon they're close enough in filming time that it's it's practically the same person at that point and it's been you know 30 years since practically yeah also tintin and lord nikon very different characters still age wise he looks around the same but it's just fun seeing him as lord nikon where he's goofing off with matthew lillard in this um as opposed to affiliate him as like a bad guy so in this seeing as him as the good guy for once is nice. yeah like we'll get to it but i love when he's giving date a hard time getting into the house or getting into the apartment and then after they finally let him in he ends up like doing the crotty noises with matthew lillard as he takes his hood off and they're playing around so it's he's a fun <laughs> character i like that scene so we open the movie with a disorienting SWAT raid in slow-mo on this house with like this airy music going on as police bust down a door and breach the upstairs to obtain Dade Murphy uh, from the upstairs bedroom. And we don't see what's going on until we smash cut to the court case where Felicity Huffman in a cameo, I guess, or just very early in her career, uh, reads out his massive crimes against humanity before revealing that he's a child. Oh, right. I forgot she was... There and gone. <laughs> that was the last yeah, I, we saw of her. I laughed because just seeing this, you always hear of like people getting swatted on Twitch, <laughs> and it's just funny to think like, wow, they've been they've been raiding and swatting people for <laughs> since the eighties. Holy crap! <laughs> so he is forbidden to operate a computer or uh, a touch tone telephone until his eighteenth birthday. He just under. Penalty of law. He destroyed Wall Street at age, what was it? 12? Yeah, I think it was young. Not destroyed Wall Street, but at his age, like, I was making GeoCities pages mass. about hot, baby, hot babes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could do in the computer. Not take down NASDAQ and... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so they talked about how much like damage, financial damage he did in all of this that he ended up causing. And then he got fined something like 40000 or $45,000. His family was fined 45 grand, yeah. Yeah, which 
still, if which I got fined six, 45 grand for anything... decimate a family in 95, yeah. depending. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of that clip from fucking the, the tiger. I am never going to financially recover from this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, like, it's it's a crazy amount of money to think of just having to cough up, especially in 1995. Yeah. Yeah. But then when I think about how much money they said that he ended up causing problems for, it's you caused $14 million in damages. You have to pay $40,000. Like, that's realistically like a not, nice car. They're not going to get any of that millions of dollars from, from somebody, so... <laughs> They send him off to like the uh, which McCall like the camp from Holes. They're like, up, oh, gotta work fourteen million worth. <laughs> You're an indentured you servant treasure. for the rest of your life. Yeah, as Halcyon on and on by Orbital just plays <laughs> him just baking in the desert sun, digging. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. So speaking of on and on, so a Shao Kahn-less orbital track kicks in and we get another slow-mo scene of him getting taken out of the courtroom and put into a car. Mortal Kombat came out in August. This came out in 95, so they oh. they took Halcyon first. So a, a hackerless <laughs> orbital track <laughs> <laughs> plays as Shao Kahn pops out at the end of Mortal Kombat. Fisher Stevens pops out, you weak, pathetic fools. I've come I'll for your hard souls. Tribes. <laughs> that's gonna be like evil dead in 2040 it's gonna be like i'll hack your soul <laughs> didn't they make that game or that movie or like it was a haunted video game oh um stay alive with frankie munez yeah. um i think it was like early 2000s yeah where it's like the the spirit in the video game that they go into the video game and if they die there they die in real life I yeah. should pick that at some point. But also, I don't remember if it was good when I saw it as a kid. My taste... Well, that's that's the point. Actually, is the same. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it's gotten better. It hasn't. Some can say it got worse. That's why I chose Drop Dead Fred. So I didn't remember. <laughs> yeah, so our boy's all grown up. He's on the, the flight as we're just like, we're grooving to uh, Halcy on and on. So I like the the whole thing of they're moving to the new city to kind of get away from this now that he's older. And I like the opening scene of him looking down at New York and you see that top down view and then that just turns into the circuit board. Yeah, that's all I and then we get the was, hackers. Um, Tron Legacy. And with the voiceover from Jeff Bridges like the grid. Digital frontier. <laughs> Cause it had that same kind of look to it with the uh the circuits and the streaming light going across it makes it look like you know ships motorcycles yeah like they'll never i want a computer that actually looks as cool as they picture computers in the 90s of you see the electricity like pulsing as it sends information through your motherboard and through your system all i see is blonde brunette redhead <laughs> <laughs> Someday that'll be a pick, Dean. And for everybody that doesn't know that reference, they just think you're weird. That's fine. It's because they found your GeoCity site. <laughs> <laughs> so did she make that? It one? was, but Babe of the Day was separated by hair color. This is true. Well, as long as she had the red dress. <laughs> so Dade is now 18 and has a computer. So his first thing he does on his birthday, getting his computer, is. He's going to go back to hacking and he's going to take over a TV station. <laughs> which his mom which, just, I guess, assumes he's joking. Yeah, which, like, we've established at this point, or we find out later, that the whole situation with this, like, tore apart his family. His parents got divorced. He had to go with his mother. And then immediately when he gets a computer, he's like, I'm just going to connect to the phone line. I'm just going to hack this TV station real quick. You know, I couldn't go on the computer Unless my mom knew, because obviously the phone line back then, there was only one in the house and you needed it to call anything. Yeah. But also it shares that line with the internet. So if he's not allowed to touch a, a dial tone phone for that long, that means he doesn't have his own line. So how the hell is he going to be able to like do all of this stuff without his mom knowing? Maybe it's because she moved to a new city, had no friends, so she, they knew nobody would call. 
Ouch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you used to have to pay? Well, not you. Remember when your parents used to have to pay for internet by, it was like minutes or whatever the original plans were? Because I remember it used to be like you go on AOL and it was, you're like wasting minutes on there. Shit, was it minutes? I can't remember. It was, I don't know if it was we minutes or if it was like. text too. True. Yeah, that, oh, that's a conversation that was to bad. have it. Yeah. I remember, I remember wasting an entire like phone card in a matter of like half an hour with text just gone. <laughs> it was an overly verbose child. Back, back <laughs> when the, the Nokia bricks were uh, Damn you, Dean, and your purple pros. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, I remember it being, or if you would do a download and it's like, oh, there's a demo for a game. And I would have to get up like at 5 a.m. on Saturday morning when all, like my parents are either at work or sleeping. So this way I'm able to start a download so nobody would notice that the phone line's being used. And then by the time they realize it, it's like noon and hopefully my download is done by then. So I will not miss that in an era where like if I get anything under like gigabit, I get antsy. <laughs> so spoiled. I can get 4K streaming to my watch today. I think... um the Matrix stole all of their costuming and look for their hackers from <laughs> Zero Cool. I wanted to know where they all went shopping to get their outfits because clearly you didn't just go to the nearest like TJ Maxx or Bradley's or Caldor's or whatever nearby department store they would go to for that sort of thing. Yeah, there's interesting outfits in this. Like leather jumpsuits. There's like whatever Matthew Lillard is wearing throughout most of this film. Um, I had a laugh because during the the hacking scene where he's you know hacking into the the television station, he's sitting in his house, and I'm assuming it's probably like one two o'clock in the morning. So he's in his bedroom at night by himself with no intention or even knowing anybody. He's just unironically wearing sunglasses because yeah. that's the hacking thing to do yeah yeah let's so say it looks like neo or one of those guys i like how you immediately go to that of like oh he looks like neo and mine i'm like he looks like a dork <laughs> <laughs> and then the thing that got me laughing too was like for a hacker being able to get into this stuff so easily the dude's got like a six word per minute keystroke ability <laughs> because watching <laughs> him type was note. the most excruciating thing in the world <laughs> I think um, the Angelina Jolie's character, Kate, even says at one point, she's like, I hope you don't screw like you type. <laughs> she's just like pecking away. He, he's like two in each index finger, just one at a time, just looking at the keys. Just only his elbows. He's just... <laughs> so, yeah, so he ends up calling into this TV station and trying to get the IP address off of one of the machines there by using the alias Eddie Vedder, which is something that I missed only that the somehow. 90s will know. So yeah, so he uses like social engineering to get the IP address from Norm. And then he takes over the station and swaps out like this weird right-wing talk show or whatever it is <laughs> yeah. with the outer limits, which I don't know. Like, I assume that when we end up getting all the messages of like, what are you doing? You're in my turf. I assume it was that it, the other hacker just doesn't generally like that turf being messed with. Not that they specifically put that show on. I just realized that Angelina <laughs> Jolie was watching that white supremacist <laughs> dude. <laughs> so, yeah. So I like the, the whole outer limits thing. Like, don't touch your dial or like you don't adjust your tracking. We're that now in control. It's very, yeah. Zero Cool essentially... May predated um, streaming here. Like he 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 chose the program. True on demand content. Yeah, yeah. He decides he's not zero cool anymore because he ends up getting into a fight with Acid Burn, who, as we said before, is popping up the you wouldn't download a car uh, things onto his screen. So he decides to become Crash Override, which you wouldn't I guess impersonate Crash... Eddie Vedder, would you? <laughs> My baby's in love with Eddie Vedder. <laughs> that's a song right so yeah so it becomes crash override which i guess is a play on words of flash override it's like the highest priority access for i forgot it's, 
I want to say it's like an avion system or something. And he ends up ultimately losing this back and forth hacking battle <laughs> as we get this fast paced montage of the the arm at the TV station that physically grabs tapes off a wall and puts VHS tapes or whatever into a machine is just furiously flying around a room trying to uh, jump between Fox News and Outer Limits. It'd be funny if it like put two tapes in that was overlaying each other and some weird amalgamation of programming happened. <laughs> just, it's like very... It's like Looney Tunes, but that white supremacist audio is over. Yeah, it's like very <laughs> conservative outer limits. Yeah. So he loses. Yeah, I have that note here. Right, my last note for the scene, Nick, is man, zero cool types really slow for being a hacker. <laughs> it's well, bad. also in his defense, he has not used a computer in how many years? But he's but he's still hacking. True. So it's like so. <laughs> technology it's, just hasn't advanced I know since he was it's i know it's the movie in the direction making this be the case you know they're like they want the words to appear at a certain speed and whatever so even though it, it would be blindingly fast from a real life perspective it is concerning on how much technology boomed over the last 15 20 years and how slowly information security has evolved with it <laughs> So it's like now InfoSec is the new big like tech to get into in the industry. And it seems like there's so many different courses and places opening up new roles for that specific job. But back then, it's just like it made me laugh on how like they said it several times. Like, what are the most three common passwords? And my jaw dropped when I'm like, that's a three character password. Mm-hmm. <laughs> most of them Weak. were. What was it? God, sex, and... Secret and love. Yeah. And today it's admin and password, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah but it's password, but you use like an at yeah, symbol yeah. or four. Just hit enter. Yeah. <laughs> the best password is no password. They'll never <laughs> expect it. <laughs> Try boobs. <laughs> Try boobs with a Z. Try 80085. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the uh it was an office reference. Their server crashed and they're like, What's the password? I don't know. I remember Pam being offended by it. <laughs> try boobs. <laughs> Pam gets a, gives a look. He's like, try boobs with a Z. <laughs> it's like, what? And then he tries and he's like, Alright, I'm in. <laughs> so evidently there was um like an article or whatever talking about how before they did this movie. They ended up doing practice and classes on typing and rollerblading. (laughs) (laughs) So, so maybe that's an actual particular choice of his typing speed and ability in this movie. Mm. Um, Because he rollerbladed fine, from what I remember. I know there's enough rollerblading in this movie to warrant... uh courses <laughs> that's the thing that they have to spend like three weeks of pre-production on <laughs> is everybody on inline skates it wasn't the method acting of learning and going to all these different hacking seminars it's just you know i need to know how to rollerblade <laughs> <laughs> so we're working on this new 1995 computer film can you rollerblade what it'll all make sense also that guy from short circuit do you think he can skateboard indoors <laughs> all the time? Who's Steve Gutenberg? No, 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 the other one. <laughs> the uh, Johnny Five. <laughs> no, 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 the other other one. Oh, Ali Sheedy. So yeah, Lauren Murphy, uh, Mother Dade, ends up lamenting that she wishes that he spent less time in his computer. She ends up getting upset that he connected the computer to the phone line, and is worried about how he's not going to end up going to college and all this. And we get treated to a flashing montage of New York City images after Dade talks about, oh, I'll mow the lawn. That's right. There's no grass in New York City. And then rollerblades to school. Again, this is like that weird mystical time of New York that I know everybody always says, like, it was more dangerous in the late 80s, early 90s than it is now. It's not a magical time. But I think it's because of TMNT, like, one and two. And then seeing this movie, it's all 
a very particular New York City that I still miss. I miss I, all um, the hacking. <laughs> I was surprised that that was his mother because I thought that was his girlfriend until she mentioned about um, going to college because um, cause it didn't help that to me the guy doesn't look like he's 18 either. He looks like he's at least in his mid twenties, and then she just looked like she was in her like I don't <laughs> for sure gauge how old we're people are showing our age here. Yeah, Who's right. the babe? Must be his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's his well, mom. Also, he was twenty three in this film, but yeah, yeah, he like he didn't look old, but he definitely didn't look like he should be going to like high school. He definitely looked to be closer in age to. I mean, that's been a trope mother. F- since forever. Oh yeah, Taylor was old this time. So Dade gets to class and meets Kate Libby, um, Angelina Jolie's character, who asks for his transfer forms, and he's instantly smitten. Uh, this something they do in the beginning of this movie that they then kind of get rid of over time is like Dade's thoughts being pop culture, quick little videos or quick little like clips from things. And then they kind of forget that idea by the the middle to end of the movie. So Kate brings him to class, ends up showing him um, where he's supposed to be, and then decides to tell him about the Olympic-sized swimming pool on the roof. And then he gets upstairs to then be trapped outdoors with the nerds um, as it rains. You know, I, I use this joke at work. <laughs> My building has six floors. I'm like, yeah, there's a pool on the seventh floor. <laughs> I, I don't know if I was told there was a pool and I was trying to get, but I was late and trying to get somewhere. I don't know that I would go check it out. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll see it. I'll see that later. <laughs> well, also, I would just be like, cool, I don't intend to jump in right now. So <laughs> I've also seen a pool in my life. It's not like a tourist attraction. So I don't know if I would like, especially the fact that. Water at a school? Maybe, maybe oh, it's man. because of me. If they said, oh, up on the top floor, if there's not an elevator, I'm not taking the stairs to the roof of this building (laughs) just to look at a pool and be like, yeah, sure is a pool. And then walk back downstairs how many flights it is. I guess grain on the top. Well, we're in New York, so never mind. I don't know about schools in New York, so So there can't be that many floors. PS 118 or something. It's like (laughs) eight floors, nine floors. My only point of reference is the school in Hey Arnold. (laughs) <laughs> which i assume I was like 14 <laughs> yeah he ends up getting trapped up there uh he ends up getting rained on and everybody kind of makes fun of him but then that's when he ends up meeting uh phantom freak because he's sitting in class and now he's annoyed and he's typing away at his computer and changing things around and then freak notices it and as he's hacking the records and then introduces himself and then we get joey who runs in talking about how we he doesn't have a handle and he never got a handle and we date date this neurotic himself kid. into Kate's class. That's what he was doing. Yeah. So he places himself in her class um to be closer. To revenge her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to do revenge. To do revenge. Hashtag Netflix. So <laughs> the club that they go to. Um, which I also, I always talk about like the X-Men 90s animated series, how I love the introduction of characters of, we get to have a scene of where we meet somebody, but they're not actually being introduced yet because the character is walking past them. Oh, That's yeah. what we happened with Matthew Lillard, a serial killer here, as he's outside talking about his mixtape of, oh, all songs by artists who like died by choking on their own vomit, um, which <laughs> <laughs> sets him up perfectly. <laughs> The only thing this club is missing is Sam Rockwell walking around uh, handing out <laughs> cigarettes to people. I thought the same thing. That's the exact place I wish they made, or like I would have, I would have been there every night. Yeah, like as soon as he walked in, I expected the music to be like the "This is what we do," like blaring Bernie, over the speakers Bernie, thing. Bernie, Bernie. <laughs> as oh, kids yeah. just like skateboard and. Although this is rollerblades. Yeah. So yeah, so Dade enters the Foot Clan hideout from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 um, and sees Kate on this giant arcade machine playing Wipeout um, on this like projector and decides he's going to challenge her um, and break her score and proceeds to do just such and she leaves in a huff. Again, they need to create this exact place 
somewhere in Boston and I would go to it. What if the only requirement though was for you to dress up like that? Yep. I would I would die happy. You have to rollerblade in <laughs> and you have to have a handle. Dade, that is the future I've always wanted. I, I couldn't help but think of the Simpsons here. <laughs> Freak comes up after he beats the high school where he's like, Congratulations, just made an enemy for life. There's <laughs> a groundskeeper Willie bit where he's talking about that. But. <laughs> you just made an enemy for life. Um, that not the, not the best first thing you want to do. I guess he wants revenge, but he also likes her for sure. Which the best way to get in with her is see her playing and then walk up and be like, bet I could do better. <laughs> That's very grade school. Um, like, I guess at the end of the day, ultimately it worked only because he had this like omniscient writer who was operating and pulling the strings from the sky on this film, but still. <laughs> I don't think Dade has any social skills at the beginning of this movie and he doesn't have any at by the end of this movie either which he should have more social skills because he specifically wasn't allowed to use a computer <laughs> or a telephone for all of his childhood so that means all he had to work with was either watch tv or go interact with people then again who's to say he hasn't been hacking this entire time true because i mean if he was going to do that in the first place he was probably just doing it just not owning a computer himself right yeah. good point Dade goes back home and decides he's going to hack the school system to set the sprinklers to go off at 9.30 on the dot. Uh, so this way, everything goes off in the hallway. Freak is impressed. Everybody is running scared from water. We see nipples. Which, you, do you? The girl you, runs by with actually, like a wet do you? shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting Freak the is like, of did you see this in, in this movie. I completely forgot about it. I thought this was a PG film. You forgot about forgot what? forgot about this entirely. PG? I expected it to be PG-13. Oh, I mean, yeah, or PG-13. see toplessness in it, but I was definitely like when you see Angelina Jolie topless for that one scene, I, was, I actually was like, whoa, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so, yeah, so all of these kids who at one time were fascinated by the idea of water on the roof are now upset about water in the hallways. <laughs> and Dade goes into Kate's class and is... Now, part of that class, much to her dismay, uh, while they have the chillest <laughs> teacher possible. I love that bit where she's like, he's not supposed to be in here. Well, he's on my list. And then like, he just looks over to Matthew Lurling and he's like, You, however, are not on my list. Whoa, this isn't woodshop class? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. Well, also, I like how he's like, he's on the list. He has this like long parchment of a list. She just like snatches it out of his hands and reads through it. Like, what do you carry around like the Santa's list worth of students just desk to desk during a class? <laughs> That's true. Also, it's not like this is the first the, day of school. Yeah. It's the attendance sheet. He has to write it down to mark attendance. Mm, there you go. Yeah, but you would think they would have like page one, page two, not like <laughs> one long page of all of his students that he rolls up like a scroll when he's done. We print them on CVS receipts. <laughs> yeah, so Matthew Lillard gets kicked out of the room as they uh, are doing all of their favorite quotes on the board. <laughs> From like modern, was it modern? Influential uh, authors. Or yeah. Like, yeah. And her, I guess that it plants that her mom is a writer, Angelina Jolie's mom. Yeah, which a throwaway thing that then never comes back or we never meet her parents. Although I guess it's just to be like, oh, well... It makes sense on why she's so advanced is because her mother is a prolific writer. So speaking that's her of home life. her parents, I mean, Angelina, Angelina Jolie is beautiful, but she is her most John Voidiest, I think, in this movie that I can remember. She looks then just is it like weird her that father. This is my favorite Angelina Jolie film. <laughs> I think it's so why you like the movie funny. Anaconda so much. <laughs> I was just about to say, is that why I'm worried about Anaconda? <laughs> I will say, though, I thought it was funny that she only makes out with guys with the same haircut as her. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. That would be funny at the end of the movie. It cuts and, like, Dade has a little, little, little shag bowl going on. <laughs> so, Dade's mom pleads with him to please fill out college applications, but he's resistant. 
and instead decides to go once again back to the club after school, where he meets up with his new friends, Joey, Freak, and Serial Killer um, at the club. And I like how Serial Killer then, they find a way to shoehorn this scene in just so the writer has a reason to run through all of these different <laughs> hacker books. Oh, yeah. Of like, they're sitting at the table and then Freak is just like... So I'm looking around. Yeah, yeah. those Crayola books. Oh, yeah. Technicolor Rainbow. And he just like starts taking book by book <laughs> out of his backpack <laughs> and just like hands it to him. And then Dave is just like... International Unix environments. Computer security criteria, DOD standards. The pink shirt book, guide to IBM PCs. So-called due to the nasty pink shirt that I wear on the cover. Devil book, Unix Bible. What's that? Dragon book, compiler design. Yeah? What's that? The red book, NSA trusted networks. Otherwise known as the ugly red book that won't fit on a shelf. And then there's just this giant stack. Fun fact, apparently those were all real. Which makes sense. Especially, I mean, for as wacky as the actual hacking in this film was, it makes sense that there's things that they would want to include just because it's, okay, so they have people quoting the Hacker Manifesto. They include in real books like this. It makes sense just because if they're interested and love the culture, then yeah, they'll spice up the stuff that they feel is boring. But the other stuff they'll probably just include in is just give itself some credit as, okay, so our books are accurate. But yeah, it's... I just thought it was interesting, but still a fun little tidbit there. The hacking fan base is going to love this movie. And then Joey admits to a felony um, out loud (laughs) in the club by hacking a bank across state lines from his home, much to everybody's chagrin. You're supposed to hack hack banks in your own state, and then you're fine. Yeah. Then the FBI doesn't care. Outside your home, within your home state. (laughs) I thought it was funny. It's just like, they didn't... You didn't use a VPN for that? <laughs> Even if this is before VPN. Nord like you VPN. Didn't, you didn't hack into like John's computer down the street and then hack into another one down that street? It yeah. Just right from your house? Like, dude, you're an idiot. And they rightfully call him out. That's and why he does that Within handle. seconds, the, the rest of the, the crew were calling him out for that too. Yeah. Rookie move, man. Yeah, like he thought he was so cool for doing it and everybody's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> like... So on my notes, I have um, headers for each scene. And then I get to one point where the header is just cyberspace with a bunch of E's. And I assume this is the first point where they go inside a machine because we get a bunch of flashing images of somebody accessing a machine inside a business and jumping into, as I said, like the the Unix world of Jurassic Park um, using the password God. And we find out that that's Joey now because of all of them making fun of him. He decided, I'm going to hack into the Gibson, uh, this super machine, and I'm going to end up getting something out of it just to prove that I was there. Uh, which I guess the, the Gibson in this movie, they named it cheekily after William Gibson, the kind of the father of cyberpunk um, in literature. He ended up doing, I think it was like 1982 or 1984, there was a short story, and then he did... Um, Neuromancer, which is a super cool kind of Johnny Mnemonic style hacking future crime tech thing. Um, if you dig all of those very like Blade Runner, uh, Johnny Mnemonic hackers, like Neuromancer is definitely cool. It's like a cyber heist. I still need to watch that. Johnny Mnemonic? Yeah, I know it's good. I've just never gotten around to it. And it's never on it's TV. It's probably going to be one of my next picks. Because watching this, I was thinking, it's been a long time since I watched Johnny Mnemonic. So, All I remember from that movie is there's a laser nunchucks or something. There I just, is. I know the difference <laughs> I don't know between what you call that, that and um, The Matrix, but it's almost the same picture of Keanu Reeves in a trench coat with his arms stretched out holding a gun in each hand. Just the lighting is different between the two movies, and that's the only reason I know. <laughs> one is one, and one's the other one. Huh, this picture is not green or green tinted. This it's gotta be Johnny Mnemonic. <laughs> yeah. I think for the rest of the year I'm gonna do Johnny Mnemonic and then do Tank Girl um to round everything out as far as my weird nineties films. Those are nineties nineties, so, nineties movies. Nineties, nineties movies. My favorite line here well it comes from the scene before this, but Freak is like, You wanna be elite? You gotta do a righteous hack. And that's what Joe, exactly what spurred Joey. He's doing a righteous hack. 
into Gibson to the dismay of Pendulette. But dude, he, he downloaded a garbage file. <laughs> but like, did he mean righteous as in like like a rad, cool hack? Or did he mean righteous as like... Hacking it and For the and, people? Yeah, for the people. Against for the justice. Machines. <laughs> Some socialist kind of hacking. <laughs> You know, we only commit red hacking. Socialist manifesto. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Joey ends up hacking into the Gibson and ends up uh, getting caught by Penn from Penn Teller. And he ends up getting the garbage file <laughs> that plays himself. Downloading. We get introduced to Mr. The Plague and also a cameo by a bunch of Jolt Cola that I completely <laughs> forgot oh, about. Oh, I missed that. Seeing this again. Oh, yeah. And his Is that scene, what Fisher has, like, Stevens Jolt has? Cola. Yeah. yeah. They even say, I think, later on the Hack the Planet episode when they're all watching it and they're like, they hold Jolt Cola up to the screen. <laughs> if you want to hack all night. Which I don't even know if you can get that anymore. All of those like drinks from around that time that were supposed to be for like the, the gamers and the hackers of like Vault, Surge, Jolt Cola, um, Balls, if you remember that. Um that was when like Nas started getting big, Red Bull started getting big, like as they moved from those things to just straight up, it's an energy drink. It'll get you wired. If your parents are out of cocaine, we've got the next best thing. Sobe energy. It just tastes like citrus. <laughs> but if you're small, you'll imagine that it gives you powers. Because I was a kid on vacation, and we used to feel like, oh, I need energy. I need to drink a cap full of Sobe energy. Oh, <laughs> we need power. I need a cap full of Sobe power because we were eight and we thought it was cool. <laughs> so I lament missing Sobe uh, as a beverage company so now. There's a cool lizard on the bottle. I like yeah. lizards. Little saying under the cap, all the different flavors. Join, so, join the yeah. Navy? Um, In the Navy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, 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 I blinked and missed it. Fisher, uh, Miss Fisher Stevens as the plague coming into the server room on a skateboard and then it cuts to a close up and he's just floating and I thought it was like a, just a weird Spike Jones style <laughs> choice <laughs> that he's just floating into the room <laughs> and I realized oh he popped up the skateboard like, like it was okay. a Mel Brooks thing it was just like <laughs> ah, he just floats all the way down <laughs> yeah also I like how as Joey is copying this garbage file from there it just looks like it bursts into the intro to like carl sagan's cosmos or whatever it is because all of a sudden you just see like all these math equations and stars and galaxies just appearing <laughs> over his face so also side note you remember dial up and floppy disks um where I he can download a you miss floppy disks extremely so really yeah it's just too bad that they're so small in terms of storage. They were like 1.44 megabytes, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I remember um, later on you can get the zip drive. And the zip drive was 100 meg. You install a game and you have to use like 10 floppy disks. Yep. I remember that. <laughs> or uh, what was the other one? Was it the was it the three and a quarter? I forgot what they called the other ones that yeah. like. But those yeah, were where the you'd much have... older ones. Those were from yeah. like the Apple generation. and Like I don't know why they called them floppy disks when the other ones were actually floppy. Right. Like the larger those ones. IBM and you put ones. it in and yeah. turn the latch. It's just an um, evolution of the name. That's all. Playing Morath's World on that. That monkey banana toss game. All those things. So yeah, so the Mr. The Plague arrives via skateboard and says, Never fear. I is here. <laughs> and sets the tone for the rest of his character. I don't, what, I, I didn't get that. Like, was there, was it I, just like saying, saying it weird to be weird? Maybe. <laughs> I think, I think the plague was the start of LOL random <laughs> that just bled into the rest of the 90s and early 2000s. He said, Nerver fur, er, am her. <laughs> Or my he her, exactly I'm her. Penn stands up and immediately punches him right in the face, <laughs> knocks him off his skateboard. You ever do that again, Eugene? <laughs> so yeah, so the plague not navigates and catches uh, Joey's file transfer as Joey's mom comes in and shuts down his computer, uh, but he still ends up getting traced. So Joey decides to immediately hide the floppy disk uh, up in like an air vent system uh, in his room. And makes it through so we actually get to meet 
Lord Nikon uh, that we had mentioned before, because now Freak and Serial Killer end up bringing Dade to his place to kind of introduce them. He puts on this, like, the show to intimidate Dade initially before letting them in and then just revealing, like, he's also just a huge dork with Matthew Lillard. <laughs> Never heard of you. Is there anything? No. Come on! Eat this neighborhood. What, your mom buy you a pewter for Christmas? <laughs> Does he know anything? Sure, man. He's a lead. Come in. Nikon, can you can crash your place tonight? Again? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and they watch Agent Gill on TV talking about taking down the hackers. Um, and then we get Hack the Planet that they all sit down and watch with the two hosts, Razor and Blade, pitch Jolt Cola and show how to hack a phone. Two things. One... Didn't this give the same vibes as like the Cowboy Bebop TV yes. show almost? Ban, dan, dan, dan. Yeah, and then the other one is that's actually called freaking. That yep. is an actual legitimate real way to hack uh, telephones in the early oh, 90s. Oh, freaking, that's right. Yeah, Which the, makes sense why like it. he ended up introducing himself and talking about like um, all of his exploits and then we see him at the club doing the phone thing of like playing the noise like he goes by freak. He does freaking. So, kind of cool. I think our phone hack as children was just uh, <laughs> call collect. What's the last name? <laughs> <laughs> the movie's over. Pick us up. W W A R E Z. Was that pronounced Wares or Juarez? I think Wares. Was it Wares? Yeah. Because of like mm-hmm. softwares. Yeah. Okay. The that's all. Well, well, that was hacking to me. We're... Like Wares. That, where was that um, coming from? You you don't remember where's or you didn't know of where's? I no. don't know. That was just like that. That was like the site. Was it a site? It might have been a site of like with hacking tools, like various. Oh, things. I didn't realize that. I once. Oh, you know what? I once did. I got into somebody's computer and I tried to like uninstall like AOL Instant Messenger or something, and that was the worst thing I ever did. <laughs> it's the most devious thing on the planet. <laughs> Dean got into somebody's computer and uninstalled Windows. Yeah. And then they couldn't get back onto the computer to reinstall Windows because he uninstalled their keyboard. (laughs) Dean deleted the C drive. That was the biggest hack I ever did. He deleted their tower. They come in, they're just like, computer desk is empty. I deleted Solitaire. (laughs) Actually, that'd be pretty rough back then. (laughs) That's half of my life. Pass your time with this. (laughs) <laughs> Ski free and minesweeper. Those are too anxious. So yeah, so Joey is showering, singing while the agents evidently wait outside for him to finish uh, before taking his bare ass to jail. Oh my god! I like. We didn't have to see that. <laughs> which, yeah, he's singing in the shower, and then as soon as he finishes, he shuts it off and he opens the curtain, and all of a sudden, then the agents are there, which (laughs) seems like they've been there the entire time. Just like, let him finish. (laughs) (laughs) I ain't taking those stingy-ass kid to jail. Yeah, which, if they're that courteous, you'd think they would be courteous enough to let him fully get dressed, rather than, like, he ends up falling trying to get away, and he's just, like, naked trying to scramble. (laughs) Like, this is supposed to be, like, a 15-year-old kid. Don't show me his ass in this movie, please. (laughs) I thought it was funny how throughout the whole movie, the cops are always like lying in wait, just waiting to arrest where oh, they're yeah. about to. <laughs> like at one point, I have in my notes when they get um, like Dade at some point of he like walks over and opens a door and there's a cop there. And then a cop immediately puts his hand on his shoulder from behind him. And it's where did that other cop come from that he was already inside his house and standing close enough behind him? That he was able to instantly grab him as soon as that door opened. We're really good at arresting people. <laughs> so, yeah. So they end up um, <laughs> stripping Joey and taking him to jail. Which I guess it's arrest him and then arrest all. Like, we'll turn ourselves in when we all get down to the station ourselves. So, <laughs> also Mark Antony is an agent now in this. And we all just play along. So the plague's upset at being called Eugene and he explains how they got hacked to like the heads of this Ellington mineral company or whatever. 
And he shows this Da Vinci virus that supposedly was planted by Joey that's going to sink their ships unless they give in a ransom. And the plague claims that he's going to save them from this because he's their top security guy. And then Margot, uh, Lorraine Bracco, as they're leaving, proceeds to loudly exclaim their entire plan on a busy office floor on how they're stealing $25 million via poor dubbing. Yeah, I thought it was poorly dubbed too. <laughs> I was like, it's, it was like this weird surreal thing that I'm listening and I'm like, I'm watching this, but it almost sounds like somebody's playing an audio track behind me in like another room and i just happen to be like if i muted mine Lip-syncing. but you're watching the same movie in the other room and you have the sound on and i'm just hearing <laughs> yours off mine i figured you know it's like you could spill secrets in a crowded mall because everybody's talking and doing their own thing i'm not really listening to you so it's smart maybe that's what was going yeah on. but with the way the agents just appear in this movie I would not be surprised if as they're walking out and they're talking about it, it's just immediately just agents descend. <laughs> so yeah, they end up... I'm more surprised that Da Vinci turned himself into a computer virus. Wow. He's very... He truly was a renaissance man. <laughs> it was either that or his art or I his s- uh, inventions. <laughs> so now he's going to sink six gliners unless they give him $25 million. <laughs> the renaissance way. <laughs> Eco terrorist Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> so they dismantle Joey's rig, looking for information on all of this, uh, but can't seem to find anything. And they decide he's going to be released under surveillance, probably much to the dismay of a number of these Secret Service. Which also they refer to them as the Secret Service. But I thought the Secret yeah. Service was specifically for protection of like the president and like the Pentagon and all of that. Not for cyber terrorism. It is. A, I it think is it's a, just. Um, I think you're scratching too deep. <laughs> I was going to say I think it's a subtle nod that. Um, well, actually, the plague is actually an idiot. Speaking of, when it comes to, as long as it's not a threat to national security, Secret Service won't intervene. But if the hacking has anything to do with the White House, the president, or whatever, they will step in for that. So unless they were mm. hacking directly into Pentagon or like files related directly that could impact the president, that's they wouldn't care. What if what we're supposed to assume is that the plague is 1995's president of the United States? <laughs> that everybody collectively big... voted for that guy. You know, I like the way he drinks jolt cola, eats vines, and then uh, skateboards. <laughs> this guy will definitely live for the next four years. <laughs> That's a big ask of your audience to assume that much. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe it's the FBI's secret service that the FBI has. Oh. We'll send our secret service that is specifically for hackers. It's just a secret service. So, like, it's just generally. one service they offer, but it's not on the menu. It's you not have on to, the menu. Yeah, like, they had to <laughs> order off menu for this. Excuse me. Yeah. Can we get the um, FBI animal style, please? <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, that makes sense. That's what it is. So, it's yeah. actually the, the FBI performing a secret service to these people. Um <laughs> <laughs> which is evidently listening to them sing and then dragging them out of a shower. So the Secret Service or the, the FBI Secret Service ends up reading the hacker manifesto in the car, which is interesting that uh, Ancient Ray, Mark Antony, listens to it. The other guy's scoffing at it and he's like, I actually think it's kind of cool. <laughs> I remember the first time seeing this, I thought it was going to be Mark Antony was going to like kind of change his mind and start working with them because it's like, no, I kind of get your culture. Like, I kind of get what you guys are going for here. And I dig it. Um, so, yeah, I just, that threw me off there. I'm a cool cat, hackers. Let me into your group. I mean, if the plague is the plague, I would be perfectly fine accepting Mark Antony as like, <laughs> yep, you're the sixth member of this crew. <laughs> and my hey, serial axe. killer can help you with your music. <laughs> Speaking of serial killer, they end up going to school um, where Freak invites Dade to a party, 
But also, serial killer is dry brushing his teeth in the bathroom the entire time. <laughs> that <laughs> I didn't that, that. That's his, like, I think, his mental stimulation quirk. Because he does it through the whole movie. Oh, I didn't realize he was doing it through the whole movie. Yeah, there's he does it like two, three times. So it was just like, which I don't know if that was like in the script or if it was just Matthew Lillard. Like, this is something he would do to get rid of nervous energy as a character. So I think this makes sense. Because it's so weird, but also serial killer is super weird. So I'm like, I guess I could buy that. That makes sense. What they don't show is he dips the toothbrush into cocaine. Brush his <laughs> teeth. Hack the planet and his pupils are like super small. <laughs> or super Hack big. The planet, I don't feel know. the drip. <laughs> <laughs> so we get a uh, a scene of the plague playing a VR mobile rig in 1995 that I didn't realize that they had like home things like that. I remember Back in the mid 90s, it was like go to the mall and it was this big event that they're showing off this technology. And it's you, sir, do you want to try the virtual reality of the future? And it's like the the red kind of very rudimentary VR headset stuff. Um, right. It was cool to see that it was it's like Nintendo VR. Like the, the one that um, Plague was using looked exactly like this the oculus you know like it, it's it's exactly yeah. what we would wear today but just 20 year old plus technology but the one that he was using i think would have cost way more than the one that you were would expect to see at the mall plus he had the um like that mobile whatever thing like the tread thing where you're able to kind of move in place without actually going anywhere which they still have now, just updated versions of it, which I think is super cool to see. The technology was there. It's just they've been advancing it, whilst keeping it mainly looking the same or conceptually the same, just updated over the years to what it is now. So he gets interrupted. So they end up getting Dade's file and the Secret Service and Plague decide to raid him. Which this is the point where I said, how do they get in front of him and behind him at the same time where he opens the door and it's an <laughs> instant pincer that. attack? Unless like that one Secret Service agent was not just from like... from the front, but from the side. From the, sides. <laughs> <laughs> the other two agents, you didn't even know were there. <laughs> well, I was just expecting like the only explanation is like Halloween H2O and he just was grabbing one handed from above him and then lowered himself down as soon as he walked past. Because it was instantaneous, just they descend on him. So the plague claims that Dade is their prime suspect for the Ellingson mineral virus ransom uh, because of his history and all of this other stuff. And then he orders the Secret Service out of the room so he can both schmooze and threaten Dade. Which, okay. Starting with loser. (laughs) Loser. Which I don't understand how this corporation, he works for this corporation. He is their security guy. And then they have this whole situation with, oh, they're going to call the ransom, so they have to call the authorities, and they bring the Secret Service. And then he orders the Secret Service out of the room that they're just like, (laughs) okay, but make it quick, Mr. The Plague. What authority does he have in this situation over, like, government agency? If we were the White House Secret Service, you wouldn't be allowed to do this. But you paid for our Secret Service, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i thought that was funny so yeah so plague plays good cop to get his help i'd like to make a treaty with you i'm sorry who are you i'm the one who understands you now can we be allies and then when that doesn't work with Dade, he takes a bat and just starts destroying his room um, which a random comes act in. of violence against the stereo. Which then the plague gets ready to leave, and which Dade says, "Blow me," and the plague says, "Thank you," and walks out. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Didn't understand it then. Don't understand it now. I just don't think he had an answer for that. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, you're. I don't know if you're 18. I, mean, I don't know how to respond." <laughs> just thank you. Looks at him just, uh huh. <laughs> you don't say. Closes his door. Can you use the Pokemon music for this next cut? 
a wild Angelina Jolie appears. <laughs> yeah, so she like breaks into his room and violently begins making out with him before the agents come in and arrest him and Dade wakes up with the weirdest boner because he's dreaming about this whole situation. Which we get, a, I think, two more times throughout this movie of like the the dream gag. Yeah. The next one's pretty good too. Yeah. So we're now at the party that Freak invited Dade to. And Lord Nikon explains he has a photographic memory, which I didn't realize until more recently. His name is Lord Nikon, and he has a photographic memory. Ha ha. Uh... Ah. Ah. So, yeah. So he ends up explaining he has a photographic memory as they mill about, and Agent Wright infiltrates the party as Mark Antony is running around. Um, and then we get Joey <laughs> at an addict anonymous meeting and he explains how he's not an addict as he's chain smoking and drinking coffee, talking about his computer life. How old is Joey supposed to be that they have him just chain smoking this entire movie? That's the 90s. There's always I don't gotta if... be that one smoker kid. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but in the scene where they're talking about righteous hacking, he's double. He has one in each hand. He's like sitting like this and smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, He's double how, fisting how cigarettes. Can that be a handle for him. <laughs> yeah. So, Carcinna, Carcinna Jim, is that a is that a good handle? Carcinna Joe, I guess. Yeah. You don't want your name and you don't want your name in the handle. <laughs> they immediately just track him down. <laughs> How'd you find me? Well, you used your real name in your handle. It's that guy that smokes. His name's Joe. <laughs> Smoking Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking Joe Hacker, that's my handle. <laughs> Includes his address in with it. <laughs> you know me, old Jones Street smoking Joe Hacker. Uh, please send a car down to pick him up. So yeah, so <laughs> Joey's at this Addict Anonymous meeting. Uh, the gang ends up playing with Kate's new laptop as it projects a Windows Media Player visualization on their faces, as we mentioned before. And Kate comes in the room because it's dark and she's making out with the other guy. And they end up stopping her or interrupting her. We're sorry, just checking out your fly laptop. Uh, it, it's hype, you know? <laughs> You're in the butter zone now, baby. Huh? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I, I want to triple the RAM, all right? Ooh, leopard boy. And the Decepticons. Uh, Kate. <laughs> Kate. You're not going into that computer shit now, right? Just starts showing them stuff while this other guy's like, okay, I guess I'll just, I'll, I'll just leave. I'll just leave. It's fine. He didn't have my haircut. <laughs> so this is the point in the movie where Dade realizes that when they mention burn, that Kate is acid burn. And then Serial puts it together and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Crash and burn. Because, you know, the, you know. I don't know. Because his name is Crash Override and hers is... I know. Okay, okay I know. yeah, you, you know. You know. So, I yeah, get so. it now. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't keep Zero cool. Although probably if your original handle is a document in an actual court case and litigation against you, you should no longer use that handle. Especially if he's... I don't think he's supposed to... Oh, wait. Was it his 18th birthday? That's why he got a computer? Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> no, his mother yeah, just finally broke down at 17. Ah, uh, you know what? <laughs> just take it. So yeah, the they're all kind of getting along there. The plague gets all the files on Dade's family and tells us, well, actually tells Margo, um, which in turn tells us about the what happened after he ended up getting tried. His parents ended up getting divorced because of everything. And then he forms the plan of, I'm going to get to Dade through his mother, because clearly he likes his mother. He chose his mother over his father to go with and all this um, throughout all of the, the trials and tribulations. So his they put a target a on him. She's a babe. <laughs> That's why he chose that. <laughs> <laughs> because she gave better Christmas presents. That's that's the... Wait, did did you mean that's why he chose that? As in that's why the plague chose that as his plan? Or that's why Dave chose his mother over his father? <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> Pork and no los dos. <laughs> I've hacked this woman's Christmas <laughs> Christmas list. This is the last time I put your Christmas list in a database. <laughs> Everybody knows I should just roll it up like a scroll, like your teacher's attendance list. So yeah, so he decides he's going to get to date through his um, mom. 
So Dave uses Kate's machine back at the party and they discuss the wonders of future technology as they go back and forth about like their the chips that are in there and everything that's being used and all the tech. And they end up forming a bet to hassle Agent Gill. And if Dade wins, Kate goes on a date with him. And then they do a preparation where Dade ends up doing a taxi driver where he quick draws a floppy disk in front of a mirror, um, which <laughs> doesn't look cool. I think they ran out of ideas. How do we show them preparing to hack? <laughs> <laughs> which, why a floppy? Like, why not a keyboard or something? Just a gun. <laughs> Just a gun. <laughs> A snub nose. If hacking fails, I have a backup plan. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he fucked up his keyboard doing what he did there. Also, I think it's the, since all of them are using laptops for all of their hacking, it makes sense on why he doesn't like just quick draw an entire laptop. <laughs> so <laughs> when they're talking about the specs for it, it just gives me the flashback to friends when Chandler gets his laptop. And he's just listing off all of these specs. And it's just like, what are you going to do on it? He's just like, oh, you know, play solitaire. <laughs> and they're listing it's off true. all of these like crazy specs for it. And I'm just like, 28.8 BPS modem? Holy shit. That's <laughs> that's a long time ago to an age I probably say that now don't miss. About Minecraft. I remember on our very first PC, we had a turbo button on it. Um, that I guess like increase the RAM <laughs> usage or something like that. So you can pump it up and it was, I don't, I forgot what it was. It was like eight megabytes up to like 12 megabytes or something like that of RAM. Um, and you can trigger that. I just imagine you reaching over and turn, there's, a, there's a bottle of nitrous and you just turn it on <laughs> and then hit the turbo button. <laughs> One last Here ride. We go. And I pop the nitrous and then I do <laughs> shuffle on solitaire. <laughs> with the castle back cards and all of a sudden all of them start flying over the screen no you hit the turbo right before you win so that that little cascading effect is at like you know it's full 20 frames per second by that point <laughs> blows my hair back like the thx logo <laughs> so yes so they decide to form this thing day does his taxi driver and then we get a hacking montage where they just ruined agent gill's life uh, Kate <laughs> terminates his cards and bank account. The waiter, uh, go ahead. No, I just wanted to know if I've seen that happen so many times. Did that really happen with a declined card? That they just really cut destroy it in it? front of you? I highly doubt that. Because that, this isn't the only movie that does this. I've seen it in like other things. Can you imagine going <laughs> to a restaurant, <laughs> giving them their card... They take it to the back. Maybe it's a malfunction on their machine. <laughs> Happened before. Maybe it's just an issue of, oh, it was in my wallet next to other things. So, like, the there's an issue with the swiper. They swipe it run once it says declined. <laughs> they just shred your card in front of you and your date at your table. <laughs> You're fucked, buddy. I think they... You tried to fuck us with this card. If anything, they probably would do it if you're trying to, like... They think you're actually stealing, and it's not like you just racked up like a sixty dollar bill between you and your wife, and it's like you have, you know, fifteen <laughs> bottles of champagne, you know, caviar, filet mignon, the highest stakes, like six boats of caviar or not caviar, sushi, and you're walking out with a bill <laughs> that boats would, of caviar, you know, right? And you were just trying to walk the out very with a bill that would meal. make even um like Drake blush with that much. <laughs> that's being just spent at this party and then you try spending that on a credit card and it gets declined i'm sure they would probably be like no 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 well that's when the waiter comes out and shreds your card but as he does it the secret service agent puts one right in the back of your head right at the table <laughs> mafia style <laughs> sorry your card's been declined and so have you if yeah if that happened today it'd be like dude i i have to text capital one and say my purchase is approved just give me a second please <laughs> We detected fraud on your account. Press yes. Oh. <laughs> Let me just tape this back together. They just call you over to the kitchen. And they put it over an open flame. So, yeah. So she ends up doing that to his bank account. He can't use his card. Dade puts him in a personal ad that then ends up getting him overloaded with sex calls. 
Uh, they hack from the Empire State Building, from what it looks like, as Kate adds DUIs to his record to get him arrested, and then Dade legally has him declared dead in their computer systems. 113 <laughs> violations. I feel like just stepping near a vehicle is enough to set off every single NYPD cop in the area to like just immediately tackle him to the ground. Yeah, I think it's, what, like after three moving <laughs> violations or something, he should have his license taken? <laughs> 113 the rest of the movie agent gill is just on like a vespa <laughs> just like whatever he can legally still use as a vehicle he's rollerblading you know they 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 did it twice showing people um we haven't gotten to the scenes but people being taken into a prison and led past like cat calling prisoners should have had him do one here too <laughs> <laughs> being taken to prison and having all the the prisoner's cat call. Well, it'd be great if they were like, what are you in for? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> he's not <laughs> even credit denying credit card was it. declined. <laughs> I ran up this 17 bottle of champagne, 146 <laughs> can of caviar. I, um, when he's getting called for the um, personal ad, his like phone line's lighting up. <laughs> yeah. I swear one of them was Fisher Stevens. Like they got him to just do one of the voices. Or what, what if it was the like, plague? <laughs> Because coincidentally, he walks in behind him after uh, and gets a pot of coffee or whatever. <laughs> it's like that sucks. What if it, like, I want to suck your toes? What if he just he's been working up the courage this entire time to finally talk to him, <laughs> and he thought like this? Oh, this is my perfect opportunity. And then he I finds out. Ad. Yeah, that's why he wants to take down <laughs> Dade, not because of this whole virus thing, but because he's like, oh, you took love away from me. <laughs> I like that canon. So. It stays. That's my rewrite for hackers. Um, So yeah, so they end up kind of completing this and coming to a tie, uh, which I like how Matthew Lillard, a serial killer, ends up saying like how cool it is. And he's like, superhero-like even. And he says it like the cowardly lion. But then we end up having this like tiebreaker that they need to establish. Um, So they decide to up the ante. And then whoever loses has to wear a dress to the date, which means already Dade has won because the original plan was That's exactly he becomes right. her slave or she goes on a date with him. And now because of the tie, no matter what a date is occurring, he just has to do it in a dress if he loses. That was, I mean, that was her um, stipulation. I feel like that was her decision. Yeah. yeah. I guess I, to me that was like her saying, okay, I'm actually into you. Yeah. She just can't admit it. So it's right. like, okay. Right. Which then she has a sex dream about Dade. And then we get another scene of her waking up from a... <laughs> what a bait and switch. It shows close-ups on like thighs and like a red <laughs> red vinyl. It pans up and it's Dade. I was like, ah. Oh. Dean was like logging into like his GeoCities site to make the update. And then he's like, damn it. <laughs> Sigh, unzips. Rezips. <laughs> Um, it's like that scene in Ace Ventura oh. when they reveal that Einhorn was Ray Finkel. <laughs> so, yes, Kate has a sex dream about Dade. Uh, the plague sends Dade a laptop with a 90s 240p video explaining that he needs his help. Uh, <laughs> and Joey's mom <laughs> ungrounds him so he can immediately get that disc and he goes to Freak to kind of bring him in on this, saying that there might be something up, but there's a tale. So they end up going after them. Freak ends up hiding the disc, so this way he doesn't have it on him. And he gets back to his like parents' house or whatever, parents' apartment, and he ends up like cleaning up some stuff and getting rid of some things. And then he has a dream about getting attacked by um, <laughs> the the agents, and then he wakes up. And he has a dream about the, and it's also a sex dream. <laughs> <laughs> and then same red vinyl dress yeah and then the end of it it's just all of them having sex dreams so <laughs> i like how again to, uh, lady with the red dress huh <laughs> <laughs> so again with agents just appearing so he wakes up and then his mother comes into the room and she like tries to wake him up and then she goes <laughs> to open the curtains and as soon as she opens the curtains all of the swat team comes piling into the room uh around them 
that's why I love Hispanic moms because they're held at gunpoint, but the second their kid fucks up, they're gonna make sure that they know. Ray Sanchez, you're under arrest under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986. Yeah, that was good. All literally held at gunpoint, and she's beating him. So Freak calls Kate for uh, from jail as his one phone call, which he does the operator and contacts her number and says that there's something up they need to go get that disc they need to find out what's on it so this way they can hopefully get ahead of this if they're being framed so kate and cereal go to dade for help and he agrees to copy the disc after they get it but then the plague ends up showing dade that he's going to frame his mother and send her to prison and then have her disappear forever using the power of technology if he doesn't give him the disc so we get the best fisher steven scene from anything um, where he does give him the disc, but he makes a copy, goes out into like the, looks like the exorcist of the, the fog rolling on the street. A limo goes by with the plague hanging off it on a skateboard. And he just grabs the disc out of his hand and then grabs back onto the limo and takes off <laughs> into the night. That's the scene that they sent to Fisher Stevens, and he's like, I'm doing this movie. <laughs> no, that's the scene he sent to them, and he's like, what can you write around this? <laughs> they're like, uh, hack- hacking's pretty big right now. He's like, okay, do it. A skateboarding movie is going to be big. Anything to get away from those stupid Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so Skitchin. <laughs> you remember Skitchin? Um yeah. So yeah, so he ends up giving him the the copy of the disc. Um and then Dade and team access the actual disc, try to figure out what's on it. And then once again, Dade enters as like cosmos, because we see again all these like mathematical equations and starbursts and colors going around him. And he finds that gonna need a montage. <laughs> so he finds that the code is actually a worm that steals money little by little from the company. Um, and deposits it into a bank account. Um, they just don't know where it's going or what it's doing as far as that. And he kind of admits to them he gave a copy of the disc to the plague, which they all act like, oh man, like why would you do that? Now he knows. It's his code. He already knew what was on it. Right. So they're acting like now he has a leg up on us. No, he literally just has his own code back. He's going to be like, cool. We, he never even asked if we made a copy. Of yeah, this. so I if anything... Weird. What, that he didn't ask if they made a copy? I mean, I feel it should be assumed, but the fact that he didn't ask or even pretend like he thought that they had a copy? Yeah. Well, if he asks, they have to legally tell him. So it would have been great (laughs) if he was just like, did you make a copy? And you have to say, as he rides off into the fog. (laughs) I have a refrigerator question. Um, Is it running? (laughs) (laughs) Um, they realize, oh, he's setting up Freak and Joey, but was they just happened on him for, by chance. Like, what was his plan otherwise? I think he was probably going to continue stealing money and then eventually find some sort of fall guy or something to that effect. Because it made it I guess sound that, like Yeah, this... I guess you're right, because they got in way early before he was like ready to be done with this scheme. Yeah, because like, they talked about stealing $25 million. Down. And at this point, I think it was like 21 point change or something like that. So they probably kicked things off early. So he went into panic mode of yeah, like, I have to activate true. Da Vinci and now I have to figure out a plan. That's right. Well, and the panic mode right. was You're right. he planned on pinning it to random hackers this whole time. The catch is, is he didn't expect them to see what the actual plan was. That it, it they saw the implication of how Plague would have been involved. He wasn't right. anticipating yeah. that part. Yeah. So it was less that it was just early. It was just, oh shit. Who's this plague? Mr. The Plague. Thank you. Eugene. So yeah, so he ends up admitting that he gave a copy to the plague um, and then admits that he was zero cool or previously zero cool, which I like how Lord Nikon is like surprised at first. Then he's like, zero cool, crashed 1,507 systems in one day. Biggest crash in history. Front page New York Times, August 10th, 1988. I thought you was black, man. Yo, man, this is zero cool. (laughs) So they plan to hack the Gibson via their combined hacking power. 
Um, and Nikon Serial infiltrate Ellenson Mineral and learn passwords. They plant devices, all this stuff. Their their abilities stack, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Good advantages. Well, I just like also how he's like, I can hack it in 10 minutes. Bullshit. With my help, you can do it in seven. And it's like, okay, so her power, she chops three minutes off. And he's like, ha, huh, with me, we can do it in six. With me, we can do it in five. Well, glad to see you're both bringing a minute to the table in terms of shaving this off. <laughs> I didn't realize that it's like unless it's like it's a it's a it's a logarithmic curve, you know. It's like diminishing. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's a case of kind of like the all the various locks in Die Hard that they're trying to drill through and like get through that there's multiple firewalls that they're dealing with and it's we can deal with them simultaneously. So you tackle this, I tackle that, you tackle this and that's why all of them working together makes sense and why it speeds up time. Because I doubt, like, it doesn't make sense if it's just all of us hacking the same thing at the same time. It's <laughs> great, but it's not like it's, like, combined efforts. Oh, so you know about hacking, Tim? Tell me everything about hacking. I saw this movie twice. <laughs> <laughs> now, so they end up going... Let me see your carpet shampooing manifesto, please. <laughs> I, do, I honestly, at this point, I don't remember how we ended up concluding that i know a lot about shampooing garbits <laughs> you really if blocked was, out a lot of drop dead fred huh oh you mean just in general on how you oh that's where it came half, from thank you yeah yeah you claim that you, your family shampooed the carpet a lot where you played rock bands so. yeah we did <laughs> had to keep things clean so they go to the club and request razor and blades help to take down the virus of which they kind of are hesitant to do that and kind of get involved because what are two guys going to do? So they end up going to Grand Central and try to hack Ellenson all at the same time. And then the Plague and Pen <laughs> literally just make shit up to counter hack everything they're doing of like, There's a new virus in the database. What's happening? It's replicating, eating up memory. Uh, what do I do? Type cookie, you idiot. I'll head him off at the pass. We have a zero bug attacking our login and overlay files. Run antivirus. Give me a systems display. A rabbit is in the administration system. Send a flu shot. Rabbit, flu shot, someone talk to me. All of these just buzzwords and phrases that I have no idea if any of it is Give actually me a system, accurate. system file, file system display. Yeah, it killed yeah. me a little bit that they didn't just cut the internet at that point. Or at least turn the monitor off. <laughs> Just turn everything off, please. <laughs> I this actually I remember now the the episode we did for a rule of thirds um, of all of our most tired tropes and the hacking one, and then the scene from I think it was NCIS or something where they're like typing at the keyboard and they're like, "Oh, they're really good. They're trying to hack us. We got to counter hack them." And then two people sit down at the keyboard and they're both typing away at the keyboard. <laughs> and then finally Mark <laughs> Harmon just like unplugs the monitor and he's like, "Well, there, it's solved." That is like hackers somehow seem so much more sophisticated and advanced than anything from a show created a decade after this. I love that Dade is is typing away and you look at his screen and it's just like the helicopter flyby of the files. Like there's like nothing on, <laughs> you don't see anything on the screen. It's just a camera shot of this fake file system. Maybe it's because he already wrote you his hack he's typing. as like a script earlier and he's just running the script <laughs> off his computer. And it's just like when you turn on the demo on a keyboard and then you just hit the keys anyway to impress people to make it seem oh, like you're playing. He's like a DJ. He's, he stands there and like, pre we're t Pretends to like turn knobs and shit. Yeah, like all the hacking happened yesterday. This is just the show now. Right. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's a great theory. I like that. <laughs> so the plague finds where they are and send the police. And then that's when we have hack the planet begins around the world, which I kind of thought this was like, it's cheesy, but I thought it was cool. And I would love to have seen like a longer time frame or a different movie of all of this stuff being involved around the world. Cause we get like this hacker sitting at a cafe in Paris and this hacker in Tokyo and this other hacker, like everybody around the world, just hearing the call and starting to do all of their hacks on this thing, which <laughs> Dean, I know hack is just I, lost all meaning. I, <laughs> I know. It's when you say a word enough times that it stops sounding real. 
I know it's not accurate, but damn it if it's not cool. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I don't mind that. I mean, you have to do something. You have, I mean, this movie's just dripping 90s. This was just, I wonder how they sold this movie. It's like, we're going to get the youth. They're in the computers. We're going to have cool clubs and cool music. And the well, I think, it's, I don't know. Yeah. We got to have the lingo. I think around this time, like, computers were such a non mainstream thing of it was like cool to have a computer or be like on the cutting edge of oh i got a computer in the past couple years kind of thing that all of this just probably sounded yeah that's plausible because everybody's dealing with dos and like windows 95 at this point that nobody really knew other than people who are like professionals yeah i think this is like maybe two people that don't know about computers like this is what it's like to me that's what it that's how i imagine it of what you can do with a computer like the you know the i can't program a vcr kind of people but i can program you mr frodo (laughs) (laughs) robot frodo twists his knobs pokes his nose (laughs) so yeah they (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, he just gets on top of him and like controls him like, uh, like Ratatouille. Ratatouille. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they all get arrested except for Serial Killer. Um, and Serial ends up finding the, the disc. So he ends up taking over the televisions and explaining the whole thing of what happened, who actually was in charge of all this. And they end up getting released because now all of this is out in the air um, everybody kind of realizes that this was a an internal situation and it wasn't the hackers that were doing this. So they all get released, Margot gets arrested, and the plague gets to dress up as an old man and try to escape via plane where he gets captured mid-flight. <laughs> so they waited as, I think maybe they were on, maybe they were like waiting for the confirmation before they did <laughs> Is this him? I don't know. He looks like an Indian guy that's kind of important from some robotics facility. No, I think it's him. <laughs> Wait, I'm actually, I, uh, it's that... this guy who s- has his friend with him, and he says he's from this mushroom kingdom. Is he corpulent? Is he very corpulent? <laughs> no, wrong guy. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm surprised since he's going to Tokyo that he didn't have like a Fu Manchu on and try to look Japanese. You only make that mistake once in a career. <laughs> I wonder when it started being a mistake to him and the world. Like oh, how long? At what point did he think back and be like, "Ooh, yeah. short circuit was a bad Ooh. idea." Was it ten years ago? Was it before ten years ago? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I I like how the um, detective Gill, like just watching Matthew Lillard say these things. It's essentially hearsay because, like, where's the proof? And immediately, Agent Gill is like, "God damn it, he got us." <laughs> Just it goes along with like cutting the credit card when it's declined. Like, hold on, like let's analyze. Is this is this true? <laughs> we found proof that it was actually Agent Gill all along, and he's like, ah, oh, and he puts his arms behind <laughs> his back, walks into a cell, <laughs> sits in the chair, puts the thing over his own forehead, flip the switch. So <laughs> yeah, they're like, it's it's wacky. But yeah, they end up catching him mid-flight um, as he asks for a pillow. And then an agent walks up and gives him a pillow and then arrests him. Um, and Kate and Dave get to have their date finally, where they swim in a fountain and watch Crash and Burn appear on the buildings <laughs> next door. That was a nice touch. To the, probably the terror of everybody else watching <laughs> street side <laughs> walking around and see Crash and Burn appear on all these buildings. <laughs> So what's going to happen? <laughs> and then they just eat face and then we have the end. The end. That was my notes. There were three points where I actually just flat out said, where do they get these outfits? <laughs> I love the wardrobe in this movie so much. It's very, it's not something that you often ever say. Cause like for period movies, it's always like, obviously they have to nail the, the costuming. Cause if not, it just doesn't look like it's from that, you know, that specific um, era that the movie's set in. 
And like Matrix had good costumes and stuff too. But like this one, it's just everyone dresses normal except the main characters. And it's amazing on how just <laughs> it's like when you play a video game and you have to pick your class, and each class is so specifically built. So that when you look at that person, you immediately know, like, that guy's a warrior. Or that guy's a <laughs> warlock, absolutely. And then every single time... Plate mail. Oh, big flowing robes. Mm -hmm. And then this, it's just you immediately know, like, oh, that guy's a businessman. Yep, he's definitely a uh, Wall Street trader. And then that's a hacker. A lot of buckles and straps. Are you a hacker? <laughs> it's, they, it's interesting, yeah, how cool they played the hackers, though. I mean... Yeah, they're going to try to make it look cool because that's like, oh, this is what the youth is doing. That that hacking montage when they're just like hacking in the middle of the street, I just can't imagine people walking by and not kind of like, what are they doing? Oh, they're hackers. <laughs> or how they got <laughs> up to the top of that one building during the hacking montage the that they weren't State immediately oh, yeah, like taken the down by security. Tower. Yeah. They should have. They should have parachuted and hacked while they parachuted off the building of the base. <laughs> just the Wi-Fi wasn't out. that good at that point. <laughs> and then they end up jumping down and they end up landing on the Angel Grove parachuting I was just uh, saying, they, they all have snowboards while they base <laughs> jump. <laughs> As they're hacking. These are teenagers with attitude. <laughs> oh yeah, I was going to ask where um, where did Dade get the Google Glass so early for his for that righteous hack? I think the real thing is, after seeing this movie, they invented the Oculus. After seeing this movie, they invented the Google Glass. Mm. Hackers wasn't the future, but it became the future. Yeah, but Google Glass didn't point. really didn't really make it. <laughs> yeah, that didn't really last. <laughs> it's more of a tech demo than anything else. Not to mention the ridicule of every person that ever wore one in public. Penn Jillette got a an Oscar a career in Vegas after this, though. Not from this. Doing magic. <laughs> after this, not from this. <laughs> <laughs> it was from this. <laughs> hey, what say you bring some Star of the magic of, of the silver screen Pendula to Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he was like, told his agent, yeah, I'm looking for some little bullshit roles. Or he knew somebody or they're like, hey, Penn Jillette, we want to do this role. I don't know, maybe. It wasn't a bad just an role. Interesting, interesting cameo. Yeah. I think overall, like, it's a definitely a fun movie. I think I still enjoy it immensely. I think also, whereas some of the other movies from around the time of, like, The the Net, for example, or some of the other ones that don't understand technology, it ends up being this very out-of-touch awkwardness of they don't understand what they're making a movie about. I think in this case, granted, the hacking was ridiculous. Some of the characters are ridiculous. But I think it's not coming from a place of we don't know what we're doing. I think it's they know what they're doing, but it's made by people who do that thing. So it's I want it to be cooler of like the coolest version of us that we think it is. And then, oh, and then the, the enemy hacker. Well, he's the enemy hacker because he's the older guy and he's a total dork because he's the one who sold out and he ended up becoming part of like the corporation. So that's why, like, the plague is what the plague is, while all of the young, cool ones are doing their own hacking thing. Like, it, it's, it doesn't end up becoming an insulting parody of what they're trying to make a movie of. I think it just ends up being a wacky, embellished version of the real stuff. I mean, I think that's what I enjoyed most about it is, I don't know from, from what perspective necessarily, but just what they made hacking like no, oh, yeah. How they judged it up, I guess. Yeah, really. yeah. The, it, and and Fisher Stevens' whole character was the most entertaining thing to me. I think the whole because the way you put it is right. Because I feel every video game movie or any movie or TV show that has video games in it, even to this day, with how popular gaming is, I still feel like none of the writers understand it, and they always make it seem like it's some stupid thing that kids play. And they don't understand what it is. And it's always shoehorned into stuff. And it's just like, that's not how you play that game. Or it's like, have you even picked up a controller before? It's just, it, it never takes it seriously, even though it is a legitimate activity. But meanwhile, they'll, for a two second volleyball scene, they'll make sure it's a thousand percent accurate, you know? <laughs> and in this, it's like, yeah, they embellished where they had to. But I mean, it was still enjoyable and it wasn't, um, 
they were able to kind of do that sleight of hand where you knew they were hacking. You never saw them specifically hack, but they talked enough about the real things and how it was done to at least for you to realize like, okay, they, they're they doing the real thing because you never actually seen them hack specifically. It was just like all that super cool FMV sequences and stuff, but you didn't see them like, you know, hack into uh like actually and, typing code for the most part. Yeah. But it's like between talking code and understanding like the mainframe books and the instruction manuals for all the servers and they did their homework where they had to. And it was that perfect sleight of hand where it kept you in the movie without forcing you to ask too many of the wrong questions. So, Dean, seeing this for the very first time, do you approve of this film? I think it's okay. Okay, we'll take it. (laughs) So thank you again for coming along for the adventure on Hackers. As always, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Screen Refresh, or email us your own movie memories at screenrefresh at gmail.com. If you like the show, help us out. Leave a rating review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts to help others find us. So for Nick and Dean, this is Tim. We'll see you again in a couple weeks on Rule of Thirds, and catch us also on our Don't Open This Podcast sister podcast, HackThePlanet.com. HackthePlanet.com.